Who was in your high school class that people might remember today? Ron Jacobs, Wesley Park. You know, and Wesley was my you know, business manager because of Wesley Park, and I thank him very much. He got me my job at the Kahala Hilton in 1967. He got me a contract for, for five years, and the rate was $1.5 million. Wow. I was guaranteed, which is unheard of. So these two Roosevelt boys. Yeah, but we had to do every, we had to do everything ourselves, put the show together. You know, it wasn't easy. You know, just and because we were far away from Waikiki, we were like you know in the boondocks, you know, going to Kahala, but we had to make it. You know, what really the success of was the local people. Wesley said, take care of the local people, and they all came. And because the local people came, then the tourists came. And once the tourists came, the Hala Terrace at the Kahala Hilton became the showroom for Hawaii. Presidents, royalty, Hollywood stars, everyone who was anyone came to see Kaniola, Danny Kaleikini. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox is Hawaii's first weekly television program produced and broadcast in high definition. And the silent night shines with a light in the eyes I love. All the things I ever knew, all my world is all for you, whirling in the dark. <laughs> Aloha my kako, I'm Leslie Wilcox. In this edition of Long Story Short, we continue our conversation with entertainer Danny Kaleikini. As a young boy in Papakolea, Danny was taught the values of family and hard work. He started out playing music in his backyard, then took his talents to Waikiki, where he learned the business of entertainment. All of this led to the year 1967, when Danny Kalekini, the boy who couldn't afford long pants, became the headline entertainer at the world-famous Kahala Hilton. Did it ever get old to you doing the show for 30 years? And you said you're doing it, what, six, seven times a week sometimes? No, I went in there, and if I, if I was really down and out, I get up there and I look in the audience and I see everybody naked and I'm laughing. So <laughs> my, <laughs> I look at, look at that! Oh my God! <laughs> and I'm laughing at that. And I'm doing the show. You're amusing yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it it worked because you know I, I had to do that every night. And that showroom was based around you, right? It was yeah. it was the cult of Kaniala. Yeah. I mean, I got to meet the king and queen of uh, you know Queen Elizabeth and you know. And her husband and Prince Charles used to stay there because he played polo and he used to come with Princess Diana. You know, I got to play golf with President Ford and I, I met uh, all all the presidents stayed at the Kahala. I mean, and I got to meet them all. And Mrs. Uh, Imelda, you know, she would come. She would stay at the Kahala Hilton, Mrs. Marcos, and she would come to my show. And she always brought like about you know 40 to 50 people, and they had a section and the security was tight and everybody you know was comfortable and yet uneasy because of the security and everything else but they always stayed in one little corner so i'm doing the show i get up and do hello, hello and then all of a sudden i go Psst, <laughs> which means beautiful lady i would sing Mrs. Marcos would stand up and sing the whole song. That was her song, you know. But she had a big voice. But all the big stars came to the Kahala. One of them was Don Rickles, a funny guy. He always came with Bob Newhart, you know. Wayne Newton, you know, David Copperfield. Uh, and then you, you started making a lot of trips to Japan, right? You had well, a whole following. 1968, I was invited to Japan. I was the first from Hawaii to do the the Tokyo Broadcasting Competitive you know, Singing International. 
So I was the first, I, I competed with people from Olivia Newton-John, they had people that came from Russia, China, Japan, and uh, we, it was a big competition. The host of the show was Sammy Davis. And the stars, the special guest stars were the Jackson, Michael Jackson uh -huh. and the brothers. So how'd you do in the competition? I won a gold trophy. I won one of the awards. Yeah, I was very fortunate. I, I, I won. You know. Did Did Hollywood come calling for you? I did. I did the the movie uh, with Charleston S. and I had a speaking part with them in the Hawaiians. I played the I was a command. Uh, Hawaiian captain for the Royal Hawaiian Guard. I had to arrest Charleston Heston. What's the charge? Violation of the Defense of the Realm Act. Treason. You are taking me to jail. Yes, sir. Let me go. And I had to shoot it up in Los Angeles. I stayed at the Roosevelt Hotel, but every morning I get up to go do makeup at like five o'clock in the morning. After I did that, I said, I don't want, ever want to be an actor. All I did was wait every day and what about performing at showrooms in uh, Vegas? Well, I was there. I worked at Caesar's Palace in the main showroom for three years. First year, I was the opening act for Paul Anka in 1970. Then in 71, I was the opening act for Phyllis McGuire. Third year, I was the, uh, the work with Alan King, you know. So it was a wonderful, you know, I mean, this was in the 70s. And then, like, in the 58, uh, I left Hawaii 58, 15. I went to work. Uh, at the Royal uh, uh, York Hotel in uh, Toronto. I did a show, a television show, and there was a young man that started out, and he sang, If ever I should need you, it wouldn't be in springtime. Robert Goulet. And then I went to work at the, in New York City at the Lexington Hotel. They had the Hawaiian room. So I worked there, and then I worked at the Edgewater Beach Hotel in, in Chicago. And, then I went to uh, Fort Lauderdale in uh, Florida, in the Yankee Clipper Hotel. This was in 1960. Then from there, we, we went to work in Cuba, 1960, at the Habana Hilton Hotel. You know, Batista, they had all that thing going on, and Batista left, he went to Florida, so we were booked at the Habana for, for about a month, and one day, the military came, they took over the whole hotel. That was the Bay of Pigs time, right? Well, the guy Fidel Castro and the brother Raul, they, that, that was the headquarters for them, and you know, we all became Cubanos. Viva la Castro, viva la Castro. <laughs> was, no, we were you scared? Yeah, because you know, all of a sudden the military, then, because uh, we didn't have our passports. Then they finally, we got our passports and we went to work in uh, Puerto Rico at the Caribbean Hilton Hotel. What did your family say? Your, you know, your father, your mother, brother, sister? Oh, yeah, they couldn't believe what, you know, what I was doing. Like, my father would never come into the room. He always stayed by the coconut tree. He had his fatigue jacket on. He had his six-pack beer, you know. <laughs> so I sat it on one night, man. I had the spotlight. King shine the spotlight. Oh, he wanted to knock me out. Man. <laughs> I said, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you meet my father? He refuses to pay my cover charge. <laughs> so he sits out there with a six-pack beer, <laughs> and we leave, we, we leave him alone. And we, the security knows that he's my father. So, but I said he, he taught me how to sing. Then, then we would sing, you know, sing the Hawaiian songs together right there. On the <laughs> True story. Wow. I wish I taped that. Oh my God, that's collector's no item. No pictures of that exist. Oh no, huh? oh, at that time, yeah, it was, but. Those, I, I, that's why I said those are, the, you know, the, the kind of times when you don't forget and you remember. And I think it's so important not only for me but for everybody. I mean, you know, you, you have your father take care of your father, you have your mother take care of your mother, you take care of your grandma take care. You know, but I think it comes to the point where we all got a malama no ana, you know, malama take care of the family. You know, but all the people that helped me, I, I tell you, being at the Kahala all those years, I mean, that was a long time to be there from the costume making to the, 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 the girls that all work with me, you know, the hula dancers. You know, Jackie did all the costumes for the show. And then my daughter was the designer, you know. But, you know, it lasted for... for 30 the, years. 30 years. And, and you, you kept all those people employed. Yeah, but I, I kept telling everybody, I said, the magic is, we used to get together once every, you know, two months, and I used to tell the guys, hey, the star of the show, all of us, okay, 
You guys give them good service? Would you like another cup of coffee, ma'am? Would you care for a glass of water? And you give them that smile and give them that aloha, you know, give them good service. I said, by the time we get, get there to do the show, they, everybody's in a very good mood. I said, after we do the show, I said, I guarantee, you know, we're gonna be here for a long time. By any measure, 30 years as a showroom headliner is a run beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Danny Kalikini did it by combining music, his Hawaiian background, humor, and his aloha spirit, especially his aloha spirit. Was it Governor Wahei who gave you the title Ambassador of Aloha? Yeah, 1988. Yeah, and I was I was so honored, you know, to because you know Duke Hanamoku has been our ambassador of aloha for you know, and I had the privilege of working with Duke. We went to open the Sheraton Dallas Hotel in 1959 in Dallas, Texas. You know, we went up there, we had no idea about Dallas, Texas. We got to the hotel, the people that came to meet us made us carry our own bags and they took us through the back way. Then we found out about, they thought we were Indians and you know, they, we never knew it you know, that lifestyle. And the guy thought I was a mulatto, and I didn't even know what a mulatto was. You know, I knew what malasadas was, but <laughs> <laughs> then I thought a mulatto was black and white. <laughs> and then, so we all go up, because we all wear suits and necktie, and he, he goes, hey, how come we gotta? Then we found out later, we had to go get a permission to go eat in the dining room, you know. I mean, it was, it was a whole different ball. 1959, we weren't even a state yet, you know. And you know, they had no idea what Hawaiians were. And you know, I, I had to blow the conch off with Duke Kahanamoka. I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> what were you scared of? To blow the conch off, because you know, for Duke Kahanamoka, he's a, you know, this guy was a icon. He was, you know, King Command man. And I get up there and go, <laughs> 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 No, but he, he is the nicest, nicest man. You're still known as Mr. Aloha, uh, the ambassador of Aloha. What does that mean to you? What does that? I mean, do you think of that every day? Oh, yeah. It's you know, it's I'm I'm, I'm very honored to be you know, just to share this Aloha, not only here but around the world. No matter where I go, you know, I can honestly say, I've seen the world, and because of music, you know, I, I thank Aku, I thank God. But you know, I go with you know Aloha's kikahi kikahi, the breath of life that we share one another. Then I'm involved with the world of Aloha, you know, the, the, the fish pond in Kahulu'u. It's a, a fish pond that was owned by Kamehameha III, and there's a total of 42 acres. Dr. Yap bought this place 50 years ago, and uh, Linda Wong is the daughter, so I, I got involved with them, so we're trying to keep it uh, Hawaii of yesteryear. But it's interesting, but I tell you, with all the changes that have been around, you know, that we've seen the changes, and I, you know what it is, you know, from television to, to look at show business today. And, and all I'm saying is that to all of our great leaders, we educate everybody on that five letter magic word, A-L-O-H-A, -A, aloha, because it's so important, especially the young people. They're the future, they're the stars of tomorrow. And some of them, you know, they, they have an attitude, you know, taran taran, like we said. But you know, it doesn't hurt. Not only the young people, our kamali'is, Kiki Okaina na Kanaka Maoli, Wahini, Kanaka Maoli na Kani, but also to the Kamainas as well, the Malihinis, bring back that aloha that we have. Because it's, you know, otherwise, this is what makes us so unique and different from all the world. How does aloha live with anger and, you know, upset over things that haven't gone the way they probably should have in Hawaii? Well, I, I think some people, you know, hold it in, and I think that's, that's the worst thing to do. I said, you know, we get a pilikia, hey, chuck it up, you know. I've always found that, you know, there's a, there's a problem, but you, you always can find an answer to this, you know. You can approach it so many different ways. You know, the problem is 360 degrees, man. You can hit them from every corner, because there's always one puka that you can just go in there, and, you know, and, and you know, come out with a final, you know. I mean, where it makes, we can all come together, Ohana family as one. But there's a lot of people that, you know, it's in life, like I said, you know, you learn from all experiences. 
when I got involved in 1960, I went to the bank. I wanted to make a loan and uh, to, to help me with my show business. I went to the bank. I stood there all morning. I, you know, I dressed. I, I looked nice. Finally, he said, good morning, sir. He says, uh, we looked at your application. He said, we turned you down because people like you are poor risk. And you have their occupation entertainment. It's not considered an occupation. This was 1960. I said, excuse me? I said, you know, I'm working as a tour director, but I'm also doing part-time. I just wanted to further my career in entertainment. I said, well, I'm sorry. We turned you down. I cried, man. I couldn't believe I walked out of here. But that gave me an incentive to go forward. I didn't sit down, go suck them up, or go play taran taran. I just said, I called my father, city and county. I said, Dad, I got turned down. He said, oh. What? I said, they said, I'm a, I'm, occupation, entertainment is not occupation. He go, oh. He said, he said, I see you at home. He said, I, said, I got home that night. He went to the credit union, city and county. He could get only $500, but I had to wait till Friday. So I got the $500, and that was the beginning, the start of, you know, doing it. Then after, I went to Kahala, and I signed that contract, five years, $1.5 million, Mr. Burns and Wesley Park. Did. All of a sudden, I became Mr. Somebody. But I was involved with, you know, all the, you know, doing a lot of charity work outside. And I got invited to be an honorary Rotarian at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. I'm so excited, and, you know, what an honor. I didn't even know what a Rotarian was. I go there, Mr. Danny Claykini, congratulations and welcome to Rotary, was the bank manager from the bank. He said, I looked at that guy, ho. Oh. He said, would you follow me? He says, and congratulations, you know, so I walk to check in, so I'm signing my name. And everybody, all of all the businessmen, I said, oh, by the way, I says, I want to say thank you very much. I said, you were the turning point in my life. I said, remember the day I came to the bank? You didn't say aloha. Would you care for a seat? Would you care for a glass of water? He looked at me and said, you turned me down because people like me are poor risk and that my occupation, entertainment wasn't considered an occupation. I said, I cried. I said, you broke my heart. But I said, you gave me the incentive to go forward. I didn't die you know, like a dog. You know, I said, but I said, you know, I called my father and I told him what happened. And, and he got the money from the credit union, city and county. And you know, I, I sing for them free. Anytime they call me, I go down the rubbish dump, I sing for them anytime. But I just wanted to say, you know, thank you. you know. International celebrity, successful businessman, friend of Hollywood stars and Washington movers and shakers, Danny Kalikini was all this. But the life of a premier entertainer wasn't always filled with good times. Have you ever had a, a, a major failure or deep disappointment in your life? Yes. I lost my son. My son was uh, 29 years old. When he passed away, I, I died inside, and, you know, and, uh, but I know he's up, he's with, you know, he's with Akua, he's with God, and he's in heaven, but uh, yeah. But you know, it's interesting, life works in so many different ways. I have a grandson now, he's, you know, he's Hapa, nice, wonderful young man. And the, every year, as he gets older, he looks just like my son, <laughs> unbelievable, it's like one step beyond, you know. Do you have any advice to people who are grieving? Oh, yeah, just you know, like I said, they're in good hands. They're up with Akua, you know, like we say, Aloha ke Akua, God is love. Na ke Akua e ho'opo mai kaia oi, aole pilikia. Because they're smiling and then, you know, one day we'll all meet together, you know, we'll all come together as family. But I know that uh, they're watching us too, so we watch, you know. That was my biggest disappointment, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being in show visit, people forget that, uh, you know, we're human beings too. And that the lifestyle that we had, when they were sleeping, I was up. You know, and I try to be, when they were growing up, to be there, you know, with them. Like, my, my son was playing football and I went to the football game, but I got there, you know, I got there late, I, we were rehearsing or something. He already made the touchdown, so I didn't see him, you know, I just, oh, I felt so. And then, you know, I was working like, uh, 
I was working like 365 65 days a year. I mean, for 10 years I worked seven days. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing you know six nights plus the law. And I remember my son said, Dad, let's go skiing. Let's go to Tahoe, you know, take the whole family. We'll all go together, you know, take take mom, take Kiki, and you know, and take whoever we want. I said, oh, I, I couldn't because New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve was sold out, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, the thing is, uh, I, I, I think about all the good times, you know, and I just like, it took me a while, but you know, so I just said, Aoli Pilikia, you know, we go forward and, you know, one day we'll all meet together, you know. That's, right. that's how I feel, you know. Do you still have um, lasting relationships from your days in the showroom? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's so important, you know. I think uh, that, you know, that we talk about Hui Lokahi coming together, you know, as one Ohana family. And, you know, I've always said, whenever I was at the Kahala, I used to tell people, Hey, go see Brother Don Ho, go see Al Harrington. I said, the surfers, you know, I said, the Society of Seven. I said, we got some of the greatest shows in Hawaii. I said, you know, everybody, you know, does something different and you will really enjoy what, you know. So it was, you know, I, and, you know, from uh, Tihari had his show downtown, but, you know, Polynesian Culture Center, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think it was so important, you know. What made, um, what, what, what is the reason the show ended at Kahala? They sold the hotel. You would have kept going. I would have. I I I even asked the you know people if they they wanted you know, but they they were gonna big management. They were gonna do you know a whole different. They had a different a whole different outlook on what they wanted to do, and I think they wanted to they wanted to bring in more more of the trade type shows and bring in more of the you know. It wasn't a hotel for the for the tourists, you know. It's gonna cater to all the, the big- Business corporate groups. Corporate groups, you know, which is, yeah. which is, you know. But it uh, doesn't work that way. It's a shame, because in 1967, we could have bought the hotel for $17 million, but nobody would lend us the money. <laughs> Your dad's credit union wasn't <laughs> up for that one. <laughs> no, it was a true story, I tell you. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I cannot, I look back and, you know, I said, I had a wonderful, wonderful stay, and I thank all the people that supported me, all the people that, you know, helped me. I mean, we all worked together as one family, you know, and I think that was the key in the success of, uh, but the secret ingredient, A-L-O-H-A. That made it work. We may never see another run like the one Kaniella enjoyed at the Kahala Hilton. At the time of this conversation in 2010, Danny Kalikini is 72 years old. He sings for special occasions and is still very much Hawaii's ambassador of aloha. For Long Story Short and PBS Hawaii, I'm Leslie Wilcox. Ahui ho kako. For audio and written transcripts of this program and all episodes of Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, visit pbshawaii.org. And to all of our Ohana family, my ho'okupu, my gift, is to share Ohe Ihohano, Hawaiian bamboo nose flute. I learned from my kupunas, from my grandpa, my tutukani, and I thank him very much. And this Humakauka! Away, away, 
Tani tita ta uwe hewe, hera tonga ra uwe, tani tani tita uwe. I, e, a, hari, a, i, a, a, hari uwe, i, e, a, hari, a, i, a, a, hari uwe, i, ha, a, hari, a, a, uwe, i, ha, a, hari, a, 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 uwe. Kiki, meka uhane no, ke aku amau ho mai ka ipu ko kela hau ko kela hau amene. Aloha kia kua, ameni. Uh-huh.